We're putting faces behind the voices you hear on the radio. Air traffic controllers in the hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today. We've got Matt and Scott, who are both air traffic controllers. Um, so the first question I want to start off with you guys is, why is it so intimidating to talk to you on the radio? Well, I'll let Scott take that one. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You know, and actually, I, I got into air traffic control because of that. I was flying okay. first, and when I am freaking terrified, to talk to these guys on the radio. I'm afraid to say the wrong thing, go the wrong place. And so I started taking uh, ATC classes and then just fell in love with it. And did so you like telling people what to do, basically? I do, yeah. Sometimes right. it's, love with that. it's nice it's because- got a control issue. Exactly. They have to listen to me. It's just, yeah. it's a great place to be in. Yeah. Opposite to him, I was a controller first and then became a pilot. So um, I can see why students think it's intimidating to talk to us because, you know, it's, we're the other man on the radio, and we're the whole intent of air traffic control is we're controlling, we're telling you instructions, you know, to do, and uh, that just adds on to the, you know, stress level, if you will, for some student pilots, especially uh, student pilots that don't necessarily speak English, <laughs> where they're over here to speak English, and uh, they're learning English while they're learning how to fly. It really affects those guys. So, you know, one thing I like to do in my off time is I'll go and venture over to the flight schools, and I'll talk to them. I'm like, hey, I'm just a guy. I'm, you know, I'm a controller, I'm also a pilot, I get it, we're not that intimidating, we're not going to come after you, you know, it's... We're not the cops. Not the cops, we're essentially. Just, yeah. We're not, not going to yank your license away because you said and too many times. Well, let me ask you this, um, you say that um, you get a lot of foreign students, for those who don't understand, why, why do we have a lot of foreign students? Uh, honestly, I don't know off the top of my head, I could think uh, mm -hmm. or imagine that it was just the uh, availability to become a pilot is greater over here than it is in some other places. Well, uh, I, I thought, you know. and maybe I'm wrong, I thought like English is the main language that's by 90% of the countries around the world for air traffic. So countries that fall in to IKO, mm -hmm. uh, English is the language of IKO, but that doesn't f stop the country of origin from speaking their language. For example, in Mexico, uh, their ADIS is, at least in Cancun, in Mexico City, they're in English and they're in Spanish. Uh, and a lot of their control instructions, it just based on, you know, when you're flying in there um, and you start speaking English, then they'll come back to you with English. Otherwise, they, it's a lot of it's Spanish. You know, same thing with uh, United Arab Emirates when I was deployed over there. Those guys did a lot of their ATC in a foreign language. Uh, so I, just, I couldn't uh, really... See, I, you know. I thought the foreign countries were sending their pilots over here to not only learn to fly, but to learn English. It could, it could be that. It could be a cost thing. I don't know. I know there's, there's several flight schools around here that have contracts with other countries and so oh, yeah, we deal with them on a day-by-day on a -day basis. I think it's the FAA's like standards in aviation as well. They're higher than other countries and so a lot of times they'll come over here for those strict standards. I can believe that but honestly the direct answer to that, I'm not sure. Could be a million reasons. Okay so we talked about being intimidated talking to you guys um, behind the mics there um, because I just hear the word possible pilot deviation <laughs> and my blood pressure goes up. So let me ask you guys, what do you, what crosses the line to where you're going to issue a pilot deviation, possible pilot deviation? I try not to. I don't like doing it. It's, I'm, I kind of come from the, you know, no harm, no foul kind of mentality. If you didn't really put anybody in jeopardy or anything like that, then it's like, all right, hey, you messed up. You know, I might not even say anything to you about it. Um, I know other guys that love to issue those things out, but that's just, it just depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, you, know? you guys have a scary amount of <laughs> authority, like yeah. it seems. I think that's, that's where the intimidation factor for me comes in, is that you guys truly do, like you have that, you know, authority to be able to, to do that. Well, in terms of authority, uh, in the end, guess where I'm sitting? I'm sitting in a tower watching out the window and you're flying the airplane. So pilot command has the end responsibility and authority of flying his own airplane. So there's not too much intimidation or authority that in that manner that comes from us. But um, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of the same mentality. I don't like to give those out for a couple of reasons. One, paperwork. <laughs> um, 
and uh, that's no fun. Uh, but two, it's uh, any times that I would have possibly given it out. The only times I've actually given it out is because uh, something almost happened and that would have been bad. Uh, and a lot of the times um, when I give those out, I try to go and not go in search and hunt of that person, but just try to talk to them and say, you know, hey, what were you, you know, what was going through your mind? Because, you know, as a pilot and a controller, I'm always learning. So maybe somebody came in and landed on a taxiway. I'm thinking, what, what exactly was going through your head? Or in the f instance of Meacham, people come in and try to land at Navy or on occasion Alliance, uh, and they get the runways all mixed up and they're, they're at the wrong airport, you know. And I don't know, I just try to see the whole story. Why were you thinking that way? It's not like I'm accusing them or anything. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, maybe there's a different way of thinking that I could avoid, you know, uh, or I don't know, maybe they just slipped up, missed a checklist item and looked down for a second and then came back up and were like, oh, we're landing at the wrong airport. So you're letting the pilot essentially learn from that experience, hopefully, and then you're learning from it as well because being a pilot, yes. you're learning from other people's mistakes. And it's like a great way to think about it. Yeah, I mean, we even give that number out to airline pilots sometimes, you know, just, and it's not just because we want to nail them for something. We just, we want to find out what was, what was going on up there, you know, where, where the miscommunication come in and how can we fix it? So what does that mean when ATC says, hey, um, I've got a number for you? Because I always thought it was just you guys trying to ask me out on a date. <laughs> and so I just always ignored it. Well, <laughs> that goes well. Well, uh, yeah, not <laughs> <laughs> negative. Uh, I'm just kidding. I've never been given the number, so. <sighs> Not yet. Um, Thanks, Matt. <laughs> come, come to me sometime. Yeah, we'll, we'll Anyways, fix that. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the number is actually, most of the time, it's the, uh, the number of the person who's giving it to you. It's a, a phone line for you to get on the ground. And, and most of the times, I won't give you any deviations unless you're landing. If you're landing at my airport, I'm going to wait until you're on the ground safe because uh, I've, I've made the mistake of giving someone a deviation before they landed. It was a very bad landing. Uh, and... Uh, something else happened uh, internally with the person that they would just they were done uh, mentally and you know I, I'll, I'll wait till they land if they're passing through the airspace and their their stable phase of flight more or less you know I'll tell them hey you know this possible pilot deviation if I really have to I really haven't given a lot of them out up here but uh, it's just a number so that they can call and it's like you know hey I'm this guy I'm the local guy and here's what you here's what it appeared that you did appeared's our favorite word because we're never you know yeah I'm not always right, you know. It's not the FISDO either. We're not giving you the FISDO number. We're not telling no. you guys to call the FISDO. We're telling you to call our facility. It's usually my supervisor's desk or, right. or maybe in the, the uh, operations manager is that sort of thing. We just want to get your side of the story and find out what happened. If, again, we're not the cops. We're not going to start nailing you for stuff. No, are we there, are not. Are there any black and white, like a pilot does this, it, it automatically gets a possible deviation? Like, um, no, no, <laughs> runway it's, incursion. It's, it's always in the gray areas. Well, I mean, maybe with you, but a, a runway world. incursion is more just paperwork for us. Um, it just varies case by case. There's no black and white that says, uh, you looked at me wrong, possible pilot deviation. Right. There's nothing along those lines. I think it just all depends on it's case by case and so what's, it's always a judgment call. It's always a judgment call because wow. if you if you go runway incursion onto my runway and you know I have this you know random centurion from a, <laughs> a you know a, a nearby airport on that comes that comes in and just lands out of nowhere. Uh, okay, well I'm gonna. I think I, I know, know that airplane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finally got out of an annual, goodness yeah. gracious, or 100 hour, whatever it was. Uh, but anyways, you enter a runway in that case. Um, then I'm gonna have something to say about it. I'm like, hey man, you see that airplane that you just, uh, you know, pulled out in front of? And it's not like it's, you know, it's more like a, hey, wake up, you know, possible pilot deviation, you just almost killed yourself. Because again, me in the tower, I'm sitting there watching the whole thing happen, going, <gasps> and then, you know, safety. So you're a tower controller, so obviously that's a completely different dynamic than from what you do, because you're at Fort Worth Center. Yeah, he's got a better view than I do, that's for sure. <laughs> Right, so what would you say are the most common, I guess, pilot deviations that you see? Because you are you work, you know, airspace that you don't get to see. You're just looking yeah. at radar, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, our stuff could usually be, uh, a lot of it is usually with like lost comms, you know, and, and the, the guys in DC are very, uh, you know, aware of, of any idea that goes Nordo for any, you know, short amount of time or whatever. And so that's usually, sometimes if we've had a guy that's gone, you know, several hundred miles, without talking to anybody, VFR, IFR, whatever, you know, we may give them the number just to find out, hey, what happened? Did you, did you pass out? Did your radios break? You know, what went wrong? So we can, you know, make sure we fix and, it somewhere else. And to else. clarify, that's after you guys have repeatedly tried to get a hold of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we have a whole checklist of, of, you know, 
trying them on guard, trying other facilities, going to previous controllers, um, having other aircraft relay, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, because we know sometimes that radios can be, you know, sketchy, especially at low altitude and that sort of thing. That's why it's a possible pilot deviation. Exactly. Maybe you didn't, exactly. do, maybe you didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. Maybe you just dropped your Mountain Dew and you're trying to clean it up and we're trying to get a hold of you. You know, possible pilot deviation. Something may have happened. Because then if you call us back and you're like, oh yeah, everything was good. Well, you didn't hear us on the radio. No, but my radio was working fine. Maybe it was just a wrong frequency or, you know. Or maybe somebody turned the volume all the way down. I get that a lot. I hear that all the time. I was That's a big say, excuse. Yeah. The, 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 one, the, <laughs> the time I went Nordo the worst was because I had uh, gone to check ATIS as I'm, you know, nearing my uh, t at time of descent, and the so much talking, I'd turn down COM one while I listen to ATIS on COM two, and forget. <laughs> and so I'm like, wow, they haven't told Man, me it's when quiet to start. Out here. <laughs> they haven't told me when <laughs> I descend. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to descend soon. I'm way too high now. Like, you know, I started punching the thing, saying, you know, trying to call in, and nothing. They're not answering me. Yeah, it was a big moment when I realized what was going on. Yeah, they're so, answering. I was pretty embarrassed. You yeah. know, it's funny, um, you know, Steve and I just went to Oshkosh and back, and there was a period of time where I was actually really concerned. I didn't hear anything on the radio. We were getting flight following up there, and I was like, wow, it's been really quiet for a while. So not wanting to sound stupid, like, hey, are you guys still there? <laughs> I literally was like, can I get a current altimeter check, please? There you go. For five and whiskey, exactly. and that's exactly, that's what I did, and they came back up, and I knew I was okay, but I, I seriously started turning it way up, and... No. I hear that every day. He's still there. He's still there. And yeah. See, I just asked for altimeter. Yeah. Is that like cool or what? I, the like? altimeter is nice. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah. I haven't had yeah. that one. No, is it he's still there or awfully quiet or whatever? Yeah. And, so I want to know what your guys' pet peeves are then. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously that sounds like a... It's Pilot almost pet like a, peeves. Oh, man. Like a pet peeve, you know. I didn't bring my list with me. <laughs> I'm sure you have it memorized. Oh. But I, right into that, I think it just goes with listening. Just listen. You know, when we have to call you three, four, five times, that's when we get frustrated. Ah. And I get you guys are busy or whatever, but just talking to your passenger, you know, and not paying attention. I've been there, but um, yeah, when, you, when we have to call you guys a bunch of times and then we're worried that you are in order and then we're starting to follow that checklist and then show up, yeah, you, you looking for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been for like 30 minutes, you know, right. whatever. <laughs> right. That's the following and flight following. Yeah, 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 exactly. I could agree with that for, for top top five pet peeves. Uh, I mean, in, in a center environment, I'm sure there's a lot of different pet peeves from when a tower, you know. Yeah. In a tower, I can see a lot more stuff. And if I see something that I was like, I didn't remember authorizing that or that's not what was supposed to happen or yeah, it's just, it's just listening. And, um, you know, it's also, you know, uh, listening and understanding what you're told. Uh, yeah. I've been approached multiple times. What's line up and wait? You're a pilot? Yeah. Uh, isn't well, that position and hold? It's, it used to be, <laughs> it, but they didn't know what it was. And I, you know, hey, line up and wait. I got to hit a hole. I got to, you know, stuff's busy and I need to get you out. Um, what's line up and wait? Uh, hold short. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it, well, I'll, I'll say this though. Um, so I got my private license. I was certificated and I went on my first real long cross country after that. Um, flew from Fort Worth to Lexington. So class C for, for work. And when I landed, did my work, so I got in the airplane, was, you know, talking to ground, I get up there, talk to tower, I'm ready to go, and they tell me to line up and wait. I never, ever had heard that phrase. And all I could think in my head was, oh my gosh, is he telling me to go out there? What if he's not? And I do a runway incursion. You know, because <laughs> he's basically, you know what to do I have to either go out to the runway or not. And so, you know, I just remember in the voice of the instructor saying, well, if you're unsure, clarify. So, you know, are you saying to go ahead and go out on the runway? And then by, by that point, he's like, you know, okay, clear for takeoff, you know. <laughs> You're just kind of inching toward the line. Yeah, there's a special word if you don't know, uh, understand something. It's unable. Unable. Unable, mm -hmm. yeah, just unable. And one thing I've learned uh, from some uh, students at, my, at Meacham is uh, some of their instructors don't allow them to do it until they're pretty close to being done. Uh, and I, you know, I sit there and wonder why, I mean, at least they do teach it to them, thank God. They do teach them, this is line up and wait, go out and stop. Um, it's, a but, simple, um, it's a simple deal, you know, it's not that hard. It's, I mean, it's just so we can get you out, you know, especially right. when we're busy and you're sitting in the rump area for, you know, 0.5, paying, you know, 150 bucks an hour. You know, I've, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and it's worn out now. So I know, I feel them sitting over in the run up area and I, it's just, you know, when I want to get you out and then like line up and wait, uh, we don't know what that means. <laughs> old short, you know, but, and then, you know, that's, I'll go in, you know, 
I, I, I haven't given a number out for that one, but I have given a number out uh, for things that weren't understood. I'd be like, hey, just give me a call in the tower. And it's like, you know, no deviation or anything, but, uh, you know, let's just talk about it and just learn, learn on both sides of the things. I'm not the perfect pilot, you know. I'd, I'd rather have you ask for clarification than make that 50-50 guess yes. right. of do I go out there or not <laughs> right. and then mess something up. We ask for clarification. If you don't get it, just tell me you don't get it. I, I can work with that. And, say, and do so more earlier rather than later, even on the ground, if you're like, you know, ready to take off and you're told to do something. It's not going to hurt my feelings if you're like, I don't understand that. I want to cancel takeoff clearance and exit and just get my crud together and, and just, you know, do that on the ground. It's better on the ground than trying to get up in the air. And it's like, okay, here's all your instructions. And you're like, uh, you know, it's. And don't worry, we'll pass that information on to the next controller. We'll be, hey, watch that guy. He's not that bright. So, you know. <laughs> you do pass that yeah. stuff on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Because you, you guys are sitting right next to each other kind of thing. Some, some yes, some no. It just depends on what sector you're going to next. Well, I'll tell you that getting out and, and meeting you guys, seeing you guys face to face has helped a lot in my own anxiety over mm -hmm. the radio. Going to the fast um, sessions where we've been able to, to listen to the Tracon's um, presentation and everything else, it's been eye-opening and really helpful. And I think any pilot should, should go Absolutely. to that kind of stuff. I implore any and all pilots to get out there, get to know your local controllers, get a tour of your local center if you have that opportunity. Yep. Um, we've actually toured Fort Worth Center before. It I was, haven't yet and I want to. It's Me an too. amazing, amazing opportunity. So we should definitely do that. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys, ATC guys, for coming. And as always, please share, subscribe, leave comments if you want. Thanks. Mm -hmm.